In this video, we're gonna look at how to shoot an interview in person with two or more people, the different styles of interview shots, the different camera angles to use, and how to get that interview audio just right, and a heap of other interview setup tips that you need to get great results fast. Hey, it's Justin Brown here from Primal Video, where we help you amplify your business and brand with video. If you're new here, then make sure you click that subscribe button and all the links to everything we mentioned in the video are linked in the description box below. So let's jump into it. Interviews are an awesome way to create some incredibly powerful content. When they're done right, they can look so easy to pull off, but in reality, there's a lot of little things that can go wrong and a lot of gotchas and simple mistakes that can leave you with a steaming pile of footage that you won't even realize until you get to your editing studio. If you've ever had it happen to you, then you'll totally understand where I'm coming from. But we're here to make sure that that doesn't happen again. So get that notepad out because we're about to run through all the key things that you need to know to nail that next interview. And while you're watching, let us know in the comments, what's your number one tip for the Primal Video community to get better results when shooting an interview in person? And check out everyone else's tips that they're sharing down there as well, because there's always a ton of sweet insights down there. And make sure you stick around because I'm also gonna share four tips to help you out while you're shooting your interviews. Okay, so we're talking about in-person interviews. Now this is where everyone is in the same location. These aren't interviews done over the internet or online with Skype or Zoom. If that's what you're interested in, we have already done a video on that topic and I'll link it up in the cards there now. So what we're looking at is the different styles of interviews or different types of interviews. And it could be that you've got one person on camera, could be that you've got two people on camera, it could be that you've got a single camera shoot or a multi-camera shoot. So we're gonna run through each one of them and even how you can use some of them in combination. And we're also gonna cover some simple tips to get better results as we go along. So first things first, just like any other video you're going to create, the most important thing that you need to do first is all your planning and research. It is so important to have all of that dialed in before you step in front of the camera, before you set up and bring someone else into your shot to be interviewed as well. So in this planning stage, you need to at least have a plan, an overview of the things you wanna cover, but ideally, you're looking at what questions you're going to ask and the story that you want to tell. Now, in a lot of cases, you do wanna leave this a little bit open-ended because the person that you're interviewing may go down a bit of a rabbit hole and that could be exactly where you want to take it. You might not have known that at the start, but you might like where it's going. You might want to explore that further. So you definitely want to have a plan in place with a lot of the questions that you definitely want to ask. But I would suggest that you leave a little bit of leeway or freeboard in there to let the interview take its own path to some degree. Now you don't want to get way off topic, but you can actually uncover some really amazing things by just letting the interview take its own course a little bit. Now you also wanna make sure that you've got enough batteries to last the entire interview. Now it sounds really obvious, but when we're shooting documentaries, each interview can sometimes go over the three hour mark. So you wanna make sure that your cameras are powered by mains power wherever you can. Same with your lights, wherever you can plug something in, plug it in so you don't need to worry about batteries, but always have enough batteries to last that length of time as well. Now the next part of the planning and logistics and everything you've got to do is to lock down your location. Now when you're picking a location, you obviously want to find somewhere that has enough room for the amount of people you want to have in the shot. So if it's just one person, then you can get away with a much smaller space. If you want two people on camera, you need a bit more space. It could be a couch that you need to fit in or a couple of chairs. So be mindful of that. But also when you're picking your location, you want to be mindful of things like the light. Is there natural light? Is there light coming through a window that might change throughout your shot? Is there a heap of background noise or the potential for background noise? It may not be there while you're setting up or actually starting your shoot, but it could be that you've got things like planes coming over or trucks or traffic or kids outside, dogs, people mowing the lawn. Who knows? We've come across pretty much everything imaginable while filming documentaries and things. So it's a good idea if you can scope out the area first and try to find somewhere with as little of those environmental variables or things that are beyond your control as possible so that they're not gonna change and stop you in the middle of your interview. Now, when you're tying all this together and you're looking at the types of actual interviews and the framing of your shot, this is really gonna come down to the outcome that you want to achieve with your interview. What do you want it to look like? Now, typically when you're setting up to interview someone like this, there's three main setup options that you've got that you need to decide from. The first one is one person on camera. So this is just the person that you're interviewing. They're the only person that's being filmed. Your next option is to have two people on camera. So the person that's asking the question, it could be yourself and the person you're interviewing may be sitting on a couch or on separate chairs or something, but there's two people in that one shot. 
shot. And the third option is to have both people involved and both people filmed and recorded on camera, but they're not sitting next to each other. So they're two individual shots. And the two shots are then edited together in your editing to pull it together as one interview. And it'll cut back and forth between one person and the other person. No matter which one of these you choose, the setup is obviously gonna be a little bit different for each one. And your gear requirement is going to be a bit different. Obviously the amount of lights and the amount of cameras that you're gonna need are gonna change based on which one of these methods you actually choose. Now, an easy way to improve the quality of your interviews is to use multiple cameras or multiple camera angles. So how you could bring this into play is you set up one primary camera, which is maybe a wider shot, and then use your second camera on a slightly different angle, which is zoomed in more on the person's face, giving you a tighter shot. So that way, when you're editing, you can actually cut and change between the two angles, but this will also give you the ability to cut the interview down without the viewer noticing. So you can actually do things like cut the person's sentences in half, take a little bit from here, a little bit from over here, piece them together, and all you need to do at that point is switch the camera angle, and it will look like it was a seamless take, or that the person said it flawlessly. Now, if you wanna achieve something really similar, but you've only got the one camera, then you can set up a wide shot and then zoom in to your footage afterwards in your editing, but this is really only gonna work if if you're say shooting in 4K or really high quality, and then you're gonna output your video at a lower quality 1080p, this will give you the ability to zoom in to your footage without any quality loss, essentially giving you two camera angles from the one camera. Again, you're gonna need a 4K camera and be outputting 1080 as your finished product. Now we do use this depending on the client shoots, especially if it is something that is a really quick interview or something where there's not a lot of room or it's just not feasible to have multiple cameras there. We'll shoot in one 4K camera and we'll output the end product at 1080, but it essentially gives us two camera angles, a wide and a tight. Now really the only other thing you need to decide on is are you looking at the camera, like down the camera lens, or are you looking off camera? So for most interviews, and especially on the documentary side of things, the person being interviewed will never normally look directly down the camera lens. They'll actually look and talk to the person that's interviewing them, which is generally sitting right next to the camera. So the end result is that the person being interviewed is looking slightly off camera. So if there was someone here interviewing me now, then I would be responding to them on either this side or this side. The only time that you actually wanna have someone presenting and looking at the camera is when they're talking to the viewer watching or the person watching. Like I'm communicating directly to you guys, I'm looking at the camera lens. I'm not being interviewed by someone. I'm not having a conversation with anyone except for you guys. So I'm having a conversation with you, so I'm looking and talking to you. If you're interviewing someone and you're having a conversation with them, then they need to be looking at you, which you should be slightly off camera. Now this does change a little bit if you're both in the one shot. So say you're interviewing someone, you're both sitting on a couch, obviously the two of you are want to communicate and talk between each other, but you'll probably also want to bring the viewers in and get them involved in that conversation as well. So if you're the one that's running the interview and you're sitting on a couch and you've got someone next to you and you're interviewing them, then you might do all your introductions and introduce the person that you're interviewing to your viewers by looking at the camera, but then the actual interview itself will take place on the couch. So it'll really come down to the outcome and what you're looking to achieve. But as a general rule, if you want to involve the audience in your videos and you want to talk directly to them, then that's when you're looking at the camera. If the focus is on the interview itself and the viewers are just coming along for a ride, like a behind the scenes on an interview that's going on, then there is no talking to camera at all. The communication is just between the person asking the questions and the person answering the questions. And when you're setting up your tripods and getting your cameras to the right height, you wanna make sure that your cameras are set just below eye level for whoever you're going to be interviewing. So if they're sitting down, then the cameras are going to be pretty low down to be just below eye level. And a really important tip too, if you're gonna be interviewing the person and you are not on camera, so you're sitting next to the camera, you wanna make sure that your eyes as the interviewer that's not on camera are at the same height as the camera lens. So that way the person that's being interviewed while they're looking at you and, and talking to you and answering your questions isn't looking up or down from the footage that's been recorded by the camera. So you wanna make sure that they are looking the same eye level as you are, which means that you may need to slouch down or stand up on your tippy toes or whatever it is to get your eye level to the right height or the exact same height as the camera so that 
The eye level for them looks perfect in the end resulting footage. And as with any other video as well, the closer you can get the microphone to the audio source, so the person's mouth that you're interviewing, the better the audio is going to be, the clearer the audio. Now, if you've only got one person that you're interviewing, then a lavalier or lapel microphone could be perfect. To get that microphone nice and close, you could stick it to their shirt, their jacket, their dress, whatever you'd like. This will also work if you've got two people on camera, but you will need one of those microphones per person so that the audio is consistent between the two of you. One lapel or lavalier microphone isn't going to be enough to pick up good audio for both of you. Now your other options for microphones is a shotgun or boom microphone. Now this is ideal if you've got more than one person that's going to be speaking or you don't want to use lavalier or lapel microphones. Again, you wanna try and get the microphone as close as possible to the people in your shot, but ideally you're not seeing that microphone in your shot. Now the great thing about a boom or a shotgun microphone is that it will pick up audio in the direction that the microphone is facing at a consistent level. So if you've got two people sitting on a couch, then one boom microphone or one shotgun microphone would be great to pick up the same level audio from both people. So the audio from one person isn't gonna be louder than the other person, the audio is gonna be consistent throughout that recording. Now if you're interested in the different types of microphones and which ones that we recommend, then check out the video linked up in the cards now. So overall, the most important part is to focus on the outcome. What do you want to achieve? So make sure you outline everything that you want to cover, but have some free board in there. Look at the type of shot you want to capture, whether it is one person, two person, or more people on camera. What does that look like? How do you see that playing out? And obviously set everything up according to that. Those are my four tips for getting great interviews that I promised you at the start of this video. The first one is to get your guest or the person that you're going to be interviewing comfortable. So if you have have the opportunity to catch up before the interview, um, that's awesome. I'll always try to get on the phone or on a Skype call with someone to almost do a pre-interview, but essentially for the best interviews, you wanna be friendly enough with them that they'll open up and share with you the gold that you want them to share. So you've really got to build that connection early. If you don't have time or the ability to do that before the actual day, then try to catch up 30 minutes before, just have some light conversations about their story and the sort of things that they're gonna cover, but without running through the actual interview. It's really all about getting them comfortable and relaxed so that they will relax in the interview and share their gold with you. And if they are someone that may be a little nervous about being on camera, then you could always set everything up and turn the camera on, even press record, let them know that you're not gonna use this first part and just start having a chat or a conversation there. That way they'll get used to the setup, used to the lights, used to having the microphones and all of this gear in front of them while the interview isn't actually started yet. So by the time that it is, they're already comfortable and relaxed and ready to go. Now before you actually start the interview, what I would suggest is that you give them a rundown or an overview of how everything is going to play out. So a bit of a briefing before. So let them know things like if the video is going to be edited, that they have the ability to retract anything that they've said or to, to not worry about making mistakes because all of those can be cut out. So all of these things you can help to make them relax. But also if you do have that ability later and you are gonna be editing your videos down, probably recommend, then let them know, give them some peace of mind. So let them know how it's gonna run down, let them know how long you think it should go for, the types of things you wanna cover. That's, um, it's gonna give them peace of mind that's gonna make them much more relaxed and get you a better interview at the end of the day. Now on the video side of things, a couple of quick tips. The first one is to sync all of your audio and video gear by clapping before you actually start. So it's as simple as pressing record on all of your audio recorders and cameras and gear that you're using and clap a couple of times maybe three times and then it'll make it so much easier to synchronize everything up in your editing software later. Now we do have a video covering that process. I'll once again, link it up in the cards. And the fourth tip that I've got for you, again, on the camera filming tech side of things, is to use backup audio, have a backup audio source wherever possible. And it could be that you've got a secondary microphone that ideally you're never gonna use this thing. This is your fail safe in case something happens, um, that you've still got good audio then. So it could be that you're running a second boom microphone Microphone, or if you're running wired lapel microphones, that you're running a boom microphone just as a backup, just in case. So for any documentaries and things that we're filming, I'll typically use wired lapel or lavalier microphones. So there's no chance of anything going wrong with that. There's no interference, there's no batteries going flat. So again, all to reduce the risk of something happening. But as a backup, just in case something happened with the wired lapel or lavalier microphones, I'll always have a shotgun microphone that's 
positioned out of shot, but is good enough audio that we could use it if we had to, so that we don't have to go and reshoot the entire interview, but it's purely there as a backup with really no intention of using it unless it's really, really needed. All right, so now it's your turn to go and put all of these things into play when you are recording your next interview. And I'll see you soon.